When Aquinas begins his treatise on Christology in the Summa Theologiae, the first question he asks is, why did God become human? Why did God become man? And he answers that question by looking at the two classical answers provided by the Christian tradition, and you could call this the divinization theory and the atonement theory in short. Uh, the, the divinization theory is that God became human so that we might be united with God. Sometimes it's said this way, God became human so that we might become God. This is a slight difference between the two ideas. In saying that God became human, we mean that God himself took on a human nature, shared in our human lot, and made himself um, subject to human sufferings, and showed us in a certain way, as human beings, how to return toward God in our own lives. Um, when we talk about ourselves being divinized or being united with God, that's in the order of grace. It's not that human beings who are Christians or saints even can become divine, but that by God's grace acting in them and which with, with which they cooperate, they can be united with God in acts of knowledge and love and participate in the knowledge of the Holy Trinity in this life, in faith, and in the life to come by the beatific vision. Um, you know, God could unite us to himself without becoming human, but as Aquinas points out in the Summa Contra Gentiles, uh, if God has bothered, as it were, to become human and suffer for us, it shows he can, he can easily unite us to himself by grace, because the, the mystery of the Incarnation is in a way a greater work of God than the mystery of beatification of the saints and of the human race. Uh, so it's a huge encouragement. I mean, God is in a certain way manifest to us his intention to be united to us and shown us by, as it were, a greater work of the Incarnation that he can do something that he's now continuing to do, which is unite us to himself by grace. So it's a kind of manifestation of the seriousness of God's intent to wed the human race or to unite the human race to himself. Okay, so that's the classic divinization theory you find in Eastern and Western Fathers. Uh, said in, in a brief way. The atonement theory, well, it comes out of also the, the patristic era, but it's formulated in a particular way by St. Anselm of Canterbury in his book, uh, Cur Deus Homo, Why Did God Become Human? And that's the idea that because of the fall, because of the collective sin of the human race, and also because of our own personal sin, none of us can uh, take the sufficient measures to place ourselves back into a rightly ordered relationship with God. We've fallen into a kind of collective, you could call it uh, disorder, but the technical word would be injustice. We're no longer in the right order of justice and of love in our relationship with God, and none of us can put it right and make reparation for the offense we've given to God. Now, it's, the idea here is not that God is, as it were, um, resentful or all too human, anthropomorphically angry in need of being placated. But there is the, uh, the, the reality that w when you've harmed the common good, there's a kind of objective disorder and even a debt that you've incurred towards the common good. But the human race has harmed the common good of our own relationship with God and incurred a debt that we have to one another through sin and to God through sin. And so the idea here is that God himself puts it right. He's the one who restores order. God is eternally happy. He's not resentful. He's eternally joyful, uh, but he's also eternally good and just. And so in his eternal justice and goodness, he takes the initiative to restore us to right order with the human race and to atone for our sins. But of course, God can't atone for our sins as God. He needs to be human to atone for our sins. Uh, so Christ is the one who is human and sinless and can atone for our sins as our brother, as a fellow human being, but he's also God, and so everything he does as human has a kind of infinite dignity, an infinite uh, power of goodness, uh, and a kind of uh, capacity for the restoration of right order due to his infinite holiness. So because he's man, he can restore, as it were, from within the right order of the world, and because he's God, there's an infinite dignity that he can convey to us in his grace. And when we're joined with Christ by faith, Aquinas says, we're united to one who's infinite in dignity and holiness, and so we become justified in the order of grace. Uh, that's to say, we, we enter into a rightly ordered relationship with God. So, okay, so God became human to unite us to God, uh, and God became human to, as it were, restore the right order of justice through reparation of sins and atonement for sins. 
And in both those ways, the incarnation is a tremendous encouragement to us that the access to God is open and that we can return to God uh, in serenity and in confidence.